Out of there, YouTube. This is kind of a different video for me, anyway. I'm going to do some auto repair today, and this is uh, involving my Toyota pickup. Well, it's not actually mine, it's a ranch truck. So, this is the part that I got that was leaking, and it looks, I'm not sure because I haven't taken it apart yet, but my suspicion is, is that this weld, after 30 something years, has finally broke loose. Probably from vibration of the pipe. Kind of a bad design, really. But it came unpainted. Still a hundred dollars. So I'm gonna pull these stickers off and I'm gonna paint it. And uh, I have a new aluminum radiator that I'm also gonna put in. So we'll see about that. I noticed right off the bat that it has a different radiator cap and it didn't come with one. It doesn't appear, so that's gonna be tricky. So we'll get to work and we'll see how this goes. I've already replaced uh, all the other hoses, but this piece started leaking on me. So I have a feeling it's this weld. That's just bad. So we'll see what happens. Just to give you the OEM numbers, and this is for a 85 Toyota pickup EFI 22RE. So in case I need to buy another one, there's a number, buddy. And some other numbers that I have no idea what they go to, but this is the Toyota number, the upper one, and this. This is the same number. This is, yeah. All right. So here's the radiator I got. It's aluminum. This is a different size neck than what's on the truck now, so I don't know what I'm going to do for a radiator cap. There's not one in the box. Also, it's got transmission cooler lines for some reason. So I'll have to cap those off. I suppose that's okay. I can deal with that. Comes with a pet cock. Looks about the right size hoses. Uh, it does have the mounts for the shroud, which is nice. I wasn't sure if those were going to come on there or not. A lot of times aluminum radiators don't have those. Because a lot of people put an electric fan on there. <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that. So, well, have to hunt for a radiator cap. And I'm going to have to do it before I put it in because I'm going to have to take the radiator with me, I suppose. So, that's no fun. So, now you can see the dilemma here. See how much bigger that is? Well, it's hard to tell with the perspective, but it's a much different size. This is much smaller. Dang it. So, here we've got a comparable. It's 945. It's CU and it's from a different manufacturer. But... Amazon recommends using this Stant 10227 as the radiator cap for it. Now, they have them at Walmart. They're $6.65, so I'm going to go run and get one. <laughs> well, and there you have it. Get radiator cap. Fits fine, except the radiator cap is not the same as the old radiator. Yeah, figured that out pretty quickly. So here's the famous or infamous 22RE. And I've got a new water pump already installed. Of course, the hoses have been replaced, but the radiator, uh, it doesn't flow. <clears throat> the water doesn't move across like it should. So I'm guessing there's some kind of obstruction inside. And it's never been replaced. So chances are it needs it. But i got some work to do. Of course, I already just did this, so I'll get to redo it. So at least all the bolts will be loose. And it's a very good truck. It's always been a good truck, so it's worth the effort to fix it. Eventually, it's probably going to need a motor replacement, but for now, it should be okay. So this is the pipe that I'm going to be replacing, that metal part with the hose sticking off of it. And I'm going to need a new one of those upper hoses. There's a new lower hose already on it. Now, they were telling me that there's a bypass hose somewhere in here, but I'm sure I'll find it when I get to it. So that's got to come off. All this has got to come off. I figure what I'm going to do probably is flush the cooling system. It's got something in it. I'm not sure if it's stop leak or what somebody put in it. I might have done it myself. My memory sucks, so it's possible I did it. So I'm going to try to flush all that out of the block first. I'm going to leave the hoses connected. I'll take the thermostat out and I'll just run water through it until it flushes it clear. It actually doesn't look too bad. I used some of that super flush last time. Um, so it's pretty green, kind of unfortunate. I'm pretty much just gonna have to waste it, but please, by all means, have some containers. Don't just dump it on the ground. It's not good for your ground. All right, now we're getting some brownness. It's draining out of the block. It's gotta be in the block. Dang it, another dang it. 
I wonder how many dang we're gonna have today until we get into some more colorful words. Yeah, something nasty's coming out of there. It's brown. I don't think it's rust. There's no uh, antifreeze in the oil, but I guess that doesn't mean that the oil can't get in the other direction. Hopefully that's not the case. Because I really don't want to have to do a motor replacement this year. But if I have to, I have to. Let's see what comes out of here. You can see the brown. See that? That's not good. That is not good at all. Now that I'm out of the way, well, I guess it's not much of a better. Kind of a neat sound though. <laughs> so this is a brand new hose. Let me get out of the sun here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's a little trail of rust in there. And it does look like it's rust. It must be coming out of the block. Uh, as you can see, I had just been here, but I'm gonna take all this intake stuff off because it just is, it just gets in the way. <clears throat> and it's easy to get off of there. Just pop them off. So be back, hopefully with no cursing. All right, got it off. Now, this is a little tip. If you use your old gloves to block off your intake, it works a lot better than a rag. You're not pushing dirt in there. So most of this stuff is all 10 and 12 millimeter, kind of standard Japanese stuff. Nothing really new there. So I'm gonna have to change my clothes because it's about to get dirty. So, cut. Well, today's starting to look up. Less than 50 bucks. Can't beat that. I like spider coes and when my dad comes to visit, uh, he's lost one of them. And as you know, spider coes are expensive. So this is what I'll carry when he comes to visit. Pretty cool. Oh well, when I took off the lower radiator hose, this came out. So it's obviously hasn't been circulating. I ran my uh, high speed airsoft motor across the back and it's not magnetic. So that's not pieces of metal or anything. So we'll see how it goes. Well, it's got junk on both sides of it. I flushed this, I back flushed it. So I took the, obviously the thermostat out and I'm gonna try to uh, run it with no gasket. It might leak a little bit, but there's no you know pressure. It's just gonna be open on both ends. So I'll try that. All right, well, there we have it. I got the hose, got the thermostat out. It's not leaking up here, which is kind of cool. I mean, I guess, you know, if you had to run it with no thermostat for an emergency, you would. But yeah, it's coming out clear. Uh, it wasn't, and that's not antifreeze I'm letting run out. That's just that rust stuff. I don't know what the hell that is. But looks like we got it out, mostly. I'm gonna let it run for a little while and make sure. I might turn up the pressure even a little bit. That looks pretty good. That's a lot better than it was. All right, I got it really cranked up pressure-wise, and it's getting more of it out, so. It's still pretty brown coming out. All right, well, that's pretty dang clear. I'm gonna have to count the dangs before I publish this. <sighs> well, looks like this thing was done for anyway. It's kind of odd that the, uh, there's way more up here than there is down here, even though I flushed it through the whole system. I think there might be something blocked in the radiator, just like I suspected. So, she's done. Oh well. Another quick tip, and I did it so I didn't have to make this mistake, but dump your pans before you take the bolts out. Because if you drop a, pa a bolt in your pan of water, you're going to be pissed. Alright, so I got my alternator covered up so I can sand that inlet. But, here we got our pipes out. Uh, this one has to be taken out from the top. This one, well, let me see. It's like this in the truck, actually. So anyway, the upper one gets taken off from up above. The lower one gets taken off from below. And then you slide it down kind of curly from below. So it does look like it's leaking from there. You can see there's still wet. So that look like, looks like where the, the weld busted. So, of course it's painted, and this one's not, so that's going to take me an hour or so to let dry, etc. So, I don't know, in the meantime I might do something else. 
I'll be a monkey's uncle. Guess what? On magnetic stainless. Guess what? Steel. Kind of cool, really. I guess I don't have to paint it. But I did sand it, anyway. Huh. I'll be darned. Alright, well we found her. It was a 10277. This is the Duralast part number. Looks like it's for a later model, maybe, of Toyota. And they just, it's not the same. You can see how big that one is. Considerably bigger. So, anyway. There you go. There's the number. Excuse the neighbor's weed eating, but I got the pipe in. Uh, you want to put the hose on this side first and then put it in. I guess it's kind of obvious if you've done this kind of thing before. Just make sure to put your uh, hose clamps where you can get to them. Same thing on the bottom. Then you put the hose on, then tighten in your other screws, your two screws. And we're ready to put the radiator in. Yeehaw! So here's your bypass hose. And it's not leaking, so I'm not going to worry about it. But I got her in here. Um, it's not quite to spec. Uh, I had to cut the hanger off of this side right here because it wasn't uh, it wasn't lining up and I don't know maybe this truck has some body damage not that it ever has been in an accident but anyway so it's pretty much that I'm just gonna throw it all back together and we'll start her up and see how she flows I did notice that this thing is uh, quite the open flow design so we'll see how that pans out. Well, nothing left to do now but fill it full of antifreeze and water. So I'm looking kind of forward to that. Um, so I took about a gallon and a half out, so I'm gonna have to put a gallon and a half back in. So that'll be three quarters of a gallon, right? Three quarters of a gallon of antifreeze and three quarters of a gallon of water. Anyway, so this is what I'm gonna put in it. I'm not gonna put the uh, green back in it. I'm gonna go ahead and use the red. Because now that I've got this aluminum radiator, I've removed one of the one of the three elements in the motor. So now hopefully it'll just be aluminum and steel and won't have as much of an effect that dielectric corrosion. Trielectric at that point, but now it's just dielectric, so we'll see how that works out. But hopefully no more of that brown crap. Anyway, so I'll fill it up and check for leaks and we'll see how it goes. All right, so I got her full. I wanted to remind myself and everyone else, be sure to change the fluid in the puke tank because it's just going to suck that green stuff back in. So that's the last thing I want to do is fill this thing back full of green crap. Anyway, so I just have water in here for now. I'm going to run it one time, get it warmed up, and um, see if I can't get some more of that brown out. And if so, I'll flush it out. If it's still clear, what I'll do is I'll just drain half of it out and I'll add half antifreeze. And I'll check for leaks, which is the water. So, we'll see. Alright, so we do have a subsurface current. Uh, it's not real strong. But it is improved over what was there. This, this thing is hot. Real hot. So, I guess that's what it's supposed to do. But man, ow! So, kind of hard to check for leaks when everything's soaked with water now. But, uh, we'll try it. Uh, it's pretty brown still. I'm not real fond, I don't really like that. So I might just drain this all out and refill it. So that'll be next. <laughs> this stuff is green too, I'm an idiot. Anyway, I got it in there. It's got some more air bubbles in it because I drained some out of this hose because it's got the swale in it and it gets an air bubble in here between the thermostat and the radiator. So I get to run it again, warm it back up. Oh, biggie. Unaffiliated problem. So uh, I see duct tape in here, which I do not want to see. So this is all going to have to be redone. And the battery's dead. Go figure. So I'm running out of daylight. I'm going to call this good for today. It's done. I mean, together. Doesn't seem to be any leaks at pressure. So happy with that. Because there was leaks before. So, not too much cussing. 
a couple times. But it all got together. We made it work. Here and there, a little bit of trimming and changing and having to modify stuff. What else is new, right? But for the most part, kind of cool that this ended up being a stainless piece. I like that. Not really sure what difference that makes. But anyway, I'm going to call it good, like I said. And no uh, interference with my fan or anything. So everything ended up sort of square on this. It's not perfect. But it'll work for now. At least I hope so. So anyway, if you're considering buying one of these radiators, for now I would say installation was fairly straightforward. And if you need to replace this pipe, same thing, pretty easy. No brainer. It's nuts and bolts as they say. So, with that I'll leave you until next time and thanks for watching. And I'll be sure to give an update in case I have any problems with this guy over here. I think this guy's fine, he is a uh, Toyota OEM. But I noticed the made in China on this guy so we'll see it'll work out or it won't so thanks for watching see you next time